I, I'm a star on TikTok. Papa Jake. I'm a legend. I didn't plan this. It was called Operation Neptune. Now, today we know it as D-Day. That's the invasion of Normandy, France by the Allies at the start of the end of World War II. The start of the end because that was what it took to dislodge the Germans from the parts of Europe that they had taken. And in the process, 4,414 men from the Allies' side were killed and the Germans probably had between 9,000 and 10,000 casualties killed and wounded also. It was an absolutely horrific and bloody day. The men who were there will obviously never forget it, and we should never forget them. That's why I wanted to show you some of the speeches that were given at this year's Normandy celebration. They do this every year on the Normandy beaches. Next year will be the 80th year uh, since the invasion, and I plan to do a story about it. I'm going to Normandy before too long to actually do some reporting on this. And the question is, will there be any survivors left at the 80th? This year, virtually all of them were 100 years old or older, and you can see why, but you can tell some of them are still going strong, and I wanted you to hear their stories. Some of them are funny. Some of them make you think a lot about American males and whether or not uh, America could repeat this feat uh, today with the young men that we have in America right now. Well, uh, it wasn't a matter of fighting for um, the king and country, not far as I was concerned. It's a matter of fighting against the evil of Germany. And I didn't see Russia as, a, as a, an enemy at that time. Later on, my eyes were open when I went there, when I went to the Soviet Union, and I saw the, how people reacted, and how they had to behave, and the expressions. No, it was, it, was, it was a crusade, as far as I was concerned. It still is. I'm waiting to go to Ukraine. I'm still in. I'm still on the reserve. I'm waiting to go to Ukraine now. I'm an infantry machine gunner, Private General George Patton's famous Third Army, in a foxhole just outside of Bastogne, Belgium, in what became known as the Battle of the Bulge. Let me take you back about 79 years. We were just getting ready to jump off in an attack on a strong German position. The temperature's about 10 below zero, a foot or so of snow on the ground. German artillery is blasting our position. The ground is heaving up and down with the violence of the explosions. Trees are splintering and crashing to the ground. The shrapnel is slicing into soldiers' flesh. Rifle and machine gun fire splits the air. The sound is deafening and overwhelming. We are the machine gun section of what is left of an infantry company of the 87th Infantry Division part of General George Patton's famous Third Army. Hardly more than boys, most of us 18, 19, 20 years old. Within about 10 yards of our position were the bodies of three of my comrades, men that I can never forget, Finn, West, Porzio, half buried in the snow and frozen in the 10 below zero weather, an image that still serves my mind after 79 years. There were to be many more before this war was over. My machine gun squad was now down to two. For the most part, we were children of the 20s, citizen soldiers, draftees, and volunteers. Young men, raised during the Great Depression, we did not experience the carefree days of childhood. Some of by the call to arms, especially the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. We came from across the land, from the farms and the schools and the factories, from the sidewalks of New York to the shores of San Francisco we came. Resourceful, tough, and tempered as hard as steel in the crucible of the Great Depression, these men were as tough as the times in which we were raised. 
These are the men who made up the fighting strengths of the divisions, <clears throat> carried out the orders of the generals, engaged the Germans in mortal combat. These are the men you see here before you. It may be hard to believe, but we were once young and strong. We knew that feeling of utter exhaustion, the inability of our flesh and blood to continue on. Yet, we must continue or die. We knew firsthand the violent pounding of the, of the heart, the cold sweat, the trembling of the body, and the stark terror that mortal combat brings. It was a hell that had to be endured, and we endured it. There is no way to convey to you the agony, the misery of frontline infantry combat. Even nature was our enemy. With a bitterly cold, often below zero weather, the ground was frozen solid, skies were gray, the, the, the days were short with daylight at eight and darkness by four. The nights were long and frigid and snow covered the battlefield. GIs, their bodies numb, were blue-lipped and chilled to the bone. Only a very few of us had proper winter clothing. We very rarely had a chance to be inside a house. We were outside in the zero weather 24 hours a day, day after day, without relief. These are the soldiers who, when their sar officers and sergeants lay dead, held the enemy at bay in the days when the heavens were falling and the battlefield was, out, was in flame with all the fire and noise humanly possible for over a million warriors to create. For a brief moment in history, these men held our nation's destiny in their hands. We did not fail. My grandchildren sometimes ask, were you a hero in the war, Poppy? My answer is no, but I was in a company of heroes. Ask yourselves now with heads bowed, from where, oh God, came such men as these? The warriors of the greatest generation a generation that is taking their final curtain calls of over 1,000 men a day, and soon we all will have left. 